Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so continuing on with sequence and series and patterns, um, we so far have looked at the linear sequence um, and that's where we say the first difference is always constant okay so that's what we've done so far it's where you you go from term to term by adding or subtracting um, a constant so the same amount okay so you can see in this one I'm adding four each time so that makes it an arithmetic sequence also called a linear pattern or a linear sequence okay and you always know it's a linear sequence or an arithmetic sequence when the difference between consecutive terms is constant, okay? Or another way of saying it, when the first difference is the same. So what have I done here? I've literally got the difference between three and seven. So T1, T2, got the difference between seven, 11, T2, T3, and each of them is four. So therefore, because the first difference is the same, I can conclude that this is an arithmetic sequence, okay? And if we go back to the theory we did on that the last day, we can then use our TN formula that we established, it's on page 22 of the log tables. And of course, we can use the SN formula that we also did in the last class, okay? So that's the linear sequence. OK, but there's a couple of more uh, as part of your course, and, and that's the quadratic pattern or sequence and the cubic, um, the cubic sequence. OK, so down here, a quadratic pattern is nonlinear. OK, and it's nonlinear because the difference between consecutive terms is not constant. OK, so I have an example here of a quadratic sequence. So three. 12, 27, 48, 75. And I've got the first difference between each of the terms. So between three and 12 is nine, between 12 and 27 is 15, 27 and 48 is 21. And the difference between the next two terms is 27. So you can see that first difference here, it, it's not the same, okay? So it's what's called a nonlinear sequence because the first difference is not the same, okay? So then to evaluate, the sequence further or to figure out what type of pattern do we have, we then look at the difference of the difference, okay, also called the second difference. So in other words, the difference between the first term and the second term was nine, the difference between the second term and the third term was 15, okay. So the difference between these two differences then is six, okay. In the next two, we had 15 and 21. The difference between them is also six. Between 21 and 27, the difference is also six, okay? So we conclude here that the second difference is the same. And therefore you write down, the second difference is the same, therefore uh, the sequence is quadratic or it's a quadratic pattern, okay? And what's really important that you have to remember is that the general term of a quadratic sequence is given by Tn is equal to An squared plus Bn plus C. Now remember for a linear sequence, okay? So a linear sequence, I'll write it down here in the corner, Tn was equal to A plus N minus one times D, okay? That was the general term of a linear sequence, okay? If it's a quadratic and you have established, which you first of course, first of all have to test, but you establish that it's a quadratic sequence, you then conclude that the general term is given by a n squared plus b n plus c. Okay, now it doesn't appear in the log tables the same as the linear one does, but it is practically the same as a x squared plus b x plus c, okay, the general form of a quadratic. Okay, which is in the log tables right beside the minus B formula. The only difference is when it's a um, sequence and series chapter, they use N instead of X. Okay, out from that, the formula is the exact same. Okay, and in general, you, how do you solve it? Um, you might be asked to come up with the, a formula for the general term. So how do you solve it? Well, first of all, this letter A that's at the start, you also have to know that the second difference is equal to 2A, okay? So 
for this particular case, I would say that two a is equal to six. That's my second difference, it's six. So you let two a equal to six, divide across by two, and a therefore is equal to three. So now you know that tn is equal to three n squared plus bn plus c. Okay, so you have solved it for a. You then have to solve it, of course, for b and c. You have to find out what these coefficients are, and you do that typically using simultaneous equations. Okay, so that is most of what you need to know about quadratic sequences, okay? And I have um, a quadratic sequence here and we will practice that in, in, in the next video. But before we do that, I want to give you the theory behind a cubic sequence, okay? And, and this comes up less, less often because there's more work to it, okay? So in the interest of, of exam questions and the length of time it takes, it comes up less. I, I think I may have seen it once on a mock paper, um, but I can't remember seeing it in an actual leave insert exam paper. But it's more or less, the principle is more or less the same as, as a quadratic. Um, the only difference being the general equation, the general term is given by a in cubed plus b in squared plus c in plus d. Okay, and it does follow the the pattern of, no pun intended, the pattern of um, a cubic function. A cubic function is given by ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Okay, so again, the n's and the x's have just uh, traded places. Okay, um, so what does a cubic pattern look like? Well, again, you have um numbers one thing i would i would show you is do you see the way that they rise quite drastically okay um so you get the first difference you show that it's not the same therefore it's not a linear sequence then you get the second difference again not the same um so it's not a quadratic sequence okay and then you get the third difference and you show that it is the same okay and and just as an aside, if the third difference is this isn't the same and there's no real pattern coming out of it, then it is most likely um, an exponential um, pattern. OK, so in other words, the numbers are getting significantly bigger, but um, it's not a, a cubic function. OK, so you establish that the third difference is the same or is, is a constant. Therefore, you conclude that it's a cubic sequence with the general term given by tn equal to a n cubed plus b n squared plus c n plus d. Okay, so what do you need to know in this one about the third difference? Well, you need to know that 6a in this case is equal to the common difference. So in this one, it's just a coincidence that the difference again is 6, okay, um, divide across by 6. So my a in this case is 1. Okay, so Therefore, you would now take your general form and now you have solved for one of the letters um, in the, the general term, okay? And what you end up doing then is setting up a set, in this case, three simultaneous equations. In a cubic, it's two, in, in a, sorry, in a quadratic, it's two. In a cubic, it's three, because now you have three coefficients that you need to find, B, C, and D. OK, so you end up setting up three equations and solving it. And then the final step is to go back to this and just fill in for B, C and D. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.